Coaches who are in the high school season, it's hard to believe that the season has gone so fast, but it's nice to see everybody out there playing a full schedule again in 2021 in most places across the country. But it also means that it's time to think about wrapping the season up and what you do as far as your traditions to send your seniors off. And that's what this podcast is primarily about. And so this is from our 2017 series called The Game Plan with Coach Terry Shea, who is now an NFL draft consultant, but a longtime coach in the NFL and in the FBS. And he joined us in that year, our first in-season year, to talk about different aspects of the season. And here we talk about traditions. So our episode with Coach Terry Shea, Traditions. We're joined by our guest host, Terry Shea. Coach Shea, it's great to have you here again. I can't believe we're already to... uh, our 10th episode here. It's uh, my pleasure to be with you. And uh, you're right, uh, this season has really rambled through uh, quickly. Coach, uh, week 10, and what is week 10, you know, for most teams in the country, um, is an opportunity really to celebrate the tradition of the program. Some of, sometimes a lot of programs do have traditions that uh, they've, they've had, you know, in, in as a way to send off their seniors to celebrate some legacy and obviously keep the underclassmen focused on what their part's going to be in contributing to their program. And, you know, tradition is a, an interesting thing. I think the thing most coaches don't realize is that it doesn't have to do necessarily a lot with, with winning. Um, for example, I took over a, a, a football program in 2004, a high school program, that, uh, you know, had some, some success in, in the last maybe – eight to ten years of the program they were doing pretty well but prior to that it was it was really few and far between the years where they had even winning seasons and you know a lot of people say oh we we, you know we don't have a great tradition here and the truth is there was a lot of things for us to celebrate from those teams and to embrace from the people who had been through the program before us and and we had a great uh little building there field house where um you know our our play it was strictly for football you know our boosters had had paid for it and, and put this great facility up for us, but the walls were blank. And they were, you know, you go through a college football facility and, and it's just oozing with tradition, and we didn't have that there. And what we decided to do that off season was to go through all of our yearbooks and, you know, find places where we did excel, find some of those winning seasons, find the stories about some of those players who really made an impact in the program. You know, find our guys, for example, who had excelled to the point where they were all state players. And we really, we, you know, we started putting those things around the locker room. We created those stories. We embraced that tradition. So I think that's, that's part of it, too. I mean, we, Coach, we went back through and we found every single helmet from the time they started putting, you know, face masks on them all the way through. And we, we had replicas re- recreated of every single one of those. I think there ended up being like a dozen of those that had been used through time. And it really started to give our players a sense of, of tradition, which to me is guys, you're a part of something bigger. You're a part of everything that's happened before and you're a part of everything that's going to happen in the future. And and I think that's what tradition is about and what coaches try to establish. And and again, I think there's a lot you can embrace, maybe a lot that's overlooked um, to establish tradition. Boy, what you hit on Keith is probably a, applicable to about 50% of the, of the different programs around the country uh, at the high school level. That, that's, that's great when you can go back and recapture the tradition. Uh, having visited my alma mater early in September this year at the University of Oregon, and I know colleges have probably a bigger budget when it comes to uh, you know, creating a, 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 a walk through history, but at the University of Oregon, they not only had the helmets of from the very beginning of Oregon's history, but they also had these uh, mannequins dressed out in what were the old uniforms as as it started out back in whenever Oregon started playing football all the way through to the modern era. So you know you can you can dress it up a lot of different ways at the high school level. I, I'm sure uh, there are access to uh, black and white photos, you know, yeah. of, of some, of, some of the past uh, football teams and some of the key, key action shots. I mean, you, you can really do a neat job of bringing the tradition of your program specifically to the present day athlete who's playing in your program. 
And it is an important thing, you know, I, I think that they understand it's not just about this year's team, that, that there's a brotherhood there, that there's a fraternity. And in, in doing that, one of the neat things we did uh, that really celebrated our alumni is we, we created and, and we, we put it in, in our team room, uh, in the corner of our tr- team room, a replica of our, our players' lockers, and we called it our alumni locker. And, you know, we had a, a piece of, uh, you know, we, within there we had, you know, as we reached out to our alums, they sent old helmets, they sent old jerseys, they sent those black and white photos. We had so much in there that I had to assign one of the booster parents uh, the job of kind of changing out the display and displaying all these these, these pieces of, um, you know, memorabilia that our, our alums sent along. And they really appreciated that. And, you know, what I did, I was, I've never been a, a big believer, a part of, I guess my tradition as a coach, I, I hated giving out the number one. Um, to, to me, I never wanted to know who that player was who really wanted the number one because I, I, would, I would look at them differently and think, you know, it's a me person. We assigned that number one to our alumni. So the, the tag that went on the locker was the number one, and right behind it was just the word alumni. And so that alumni locker really took a, a place of prominence and, and brought back in the alumni, brought back in some of that tradition. And one of the neat things we did, Coach, as, as we approached the season, I stripped the locker down, and it, was, it had some lighting inside of it, too. It was pretty neat. One of the, um, actually, one of the, the, the fathers of an alum um, made it for us, is we just put the senior's jersey in there, a, a single player's jersey, and with a, a small sign above it that, that said, what legacy will you leave? And it really it got them to think about this idea of, of tradition that, I'm part of something bigger. And when I think when you, you know, we talk about all the things that can derail a team when you can get them to, to hook into, this is a, a, a bigger part of me and this team and, and the guys that are in this room, I think they start to feel some accountability and a, and a sense of responsibility to making sure they do their absolute best. Oh, that that's a, that's a winning formula that, that you just hit on. You know, you, you also hit on something that I think uh, our coaching audience might really appreciate. And that is, you mentioned how you got your booster club involved in uh, in setting up the you know the different displays in in the alumni corner of of your uh, of your building. You know, so many times booster clubs will come to a coach and say, "What? How can we help?" You know, and parents can will come and say, "How can we help?" And I mean, that would be a tremendous project uh, to put in front of a booster club and and create something that not only they would be proud of because you can. You know, you can look at your creation uh, on a daily basis, but it'd be something that would be uh, very special to the football program itself. So um, I, I think your idea is tremendous, uh, getting a, a booster club involved in something like this kind of a project. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of booster clubs get involved in, in pizza and T-shirts or things that are perishable, things that you, you don't see stick around your pro- program or really add to – you know, again, the sense of, of what the program's about. And, and they really did embrace it, Coach. Like you said, it's a, it was a great thing. Um, we weren't, uh, you know, positively sure that people would embrace it, but we, we found out really quick that, number one, we did have a tradition that, that, that people felt a part of and wanted to be a part of. And, it, you know, it, this gave an avenue to bring a lot of stakeholders back, you know, the alumni back in, our boosters, our current players, and, um, you know, to my knowledge, it's something that's that's still there in that locker room at that school, and that uh, they're embracing. Oh, I, I I think it's a it's it's the best way to approach trying to recapture the past and put it in front of your players. Uh, you know, you can't walk into a college uh, football lobby and not see some kind of uh, tradition that they have created and uh, recapturing their past. So, if it's good for the college programs it certainly would apply to the high school and i know sometimes college programs use it as a as a you know an entry into their recruiting uh formula but you know when you're in high school as a coach you also have some recruiting measures and that and that is to you know invite those young pop warner boys into your building and have something to show them that way sometimes you you secure those kinds of young players and their thoughts and they want to grow up to play for your team rather than go down the street and play at the private school. Absolutely. Or, or the number of different things they can do today. And obviously, um, you know, that's important to our game now is that, that we're, we're uh, cultivating that 
uh, experience and we're developing that, that those kids do want to be a part of, of what we're doing. So, uh, Coach, as we move on and when we focus on, you know, the, the tradition of Week 10, um, that last game, the last, you know, uh, at least regular season game, and, you know, regardless of, of where my teams would sit in, in terms of going on to a postseason, we always were sure to celebrate this in, in Week 10, the end of the regular season. Um, and, uh, you know, looking back on it, you think of these things, different things you do, and we're going to share a, f- a few of the ideas both you and I have experienced i think you know it's a true measure of your season as you go through these rituals or ceremonies or or, or whatever you might set up for your team that um, you can look back on these and there's there's that you know wave of emotions that hit you about these guys um and and you really know that if it's hitting you that way uh you've done it right for those kids that it's been impactful for them certainly if if the emotions come forth for them and, and really for you as a coach that this is your opportunity to really reflect on how much of a, a, a difference and how much meaning these kids have brought to um, the program and, and to your life. Yes. I, I'll start out, Keith, if you don't mind. Sure, absolutely, I, Coach. I uh, had an opportunity, and I'm speaking of the very last week of your season, You know, playing in the last game. Sometimes you're in the playoffs, and you never know if uh, you will live to play another game. But if it's the last week of your season, here's what I – picked up on and I observed when I was coaching at the time in 1988-89 at the University of California Berkeley and our head coach Bruce Snyder uh, introduced me to this closing ceremony that he created for his seniors and it was the last practice day of the season prior to your your last game and he uh, brought all the seniors together on the field in the corner of the end zone He had all the underclassmen gathered in another area of the field, and the underclassmen were instructed to create a corridor from the goalposts on out going toward the 50-yard line so that each senior player would run through the corridor and be announced. If you're in your own stadium, you could pull it off to where you have a PA system. Maybe if you're on your practice field, you could pull it off with a you know, with a megaphone, but prior to that introduction of each senior, the marching band for the University of California came out through the tunnel and played uh, the fight song of of California. And that really added tremendous glamour and enthusiasm to the closing ceremony. And this actually came after your final practice. You don't do it before practice because it can be very distracting, (laughs) but um, so they, they brought the marching band out and it played the Cal fight song. And then each senior was introduced uh, by a, an announcer over the PA system in the stadium. And they would run through the corridor of underclassmen until they got to the 40 or 50 yard line. And each, each, each time a senior would run through the, the underclassmen would slap them on the tailbone, you know, kind of, kind of make it a little bit more physical than just running through an open gate. And it, it was it was really a neat event, and each senior was introduced with his hometown, his jersey, uh, his major. Now in high school, you don't have a major academically, but you know you try to incorporate the total profile of your player, and it only takes about oh no more than ten to fifteen minutes at the end of a practice, and it's a fitting way to send your seniors off, and and I think your underclassmen really enjoy being part of that. And then they look forward to it the next year. And so I, I borrowed that from coach Schneider and everywhere I went after my Cal experience, I incorporated that with my teams that I coached and it received the same uh, reception. It had the same enthusiasm and it's a great way to uh, kind of, kind of do one more thing before you play your final game. Yeah. I, I, I love that uh, idea, Coach. I love how you brought the band out there, and, and certainly I could see that really adding to, uh, you know, a, a very dramatic moment. Obviously, that the last practice of the season, the last time these guys are going to step on the field and, and practice, and you know, certainly adds to the emotion of the game. And I agree, you you can't put that at the beginning of practice, or it probably could be pretty um, disruptive. Um, you know, right. at at, uh, at Baldwin Wallace uh, University. Um, where where I coached, I also went to school there. Uh, we had what we called 
senior tackle. And, uh, you know, it's not, not what you, you would think. It was more of kind of this, I don't want to call it a roast. Usually uh, guys would take an opportunity to share a funny story and then, and then something meaningful. But um, basically we would, uh, you know, talk to our un- underclass, but mostly our juniors uh, who, you know, would be the next group of seniors, obviously, uh, and, and ask them, you know, which senior um, they wanted to talk about. And so everybody, um, you know, who was, was close to those guys would pick one of the seniors and kind of send them off with some sharing some memories about, uh, you know, their time in the program, what they learned from them, maybe a funny story, et cetera. And, you know, that senior would stand up in front of the team and, and we'd have that opportunity to, to share kind of the human side of the game. You know, we're not really talking about accomplishments on the field as much, um, though those would come up and, and then the senior would really not even tackle, you know, we'd have a dummy out there, not even tackle the bag. Most of the time they were, you know, really, some of them overcome with emotion and go up and tap it. Um, so not a lot of guys would really tackle the thing full go, but uh, that was what we called our senior tackle. And uh, I, I really liked the idea of having those younger guys lead that, talk about the meaning of those guys, meaning of those seniors to the program. Oh, that that's, that's another great idea. I, I know um, one, several years uh, when I was coaching at the college level, we would honor each senior at the end of the of final week of practice, again, the, the day before the final game. And uh, an underclassman would – and we had these T-shirts made up. You don't have to spend a lot of money. But it had the, the senior's number, and uh, it had the word senior, and it had obviously the name of the school. But each underclassman – would uh, be charged with issuing or presenting one of these t-shirts to each senior. uh, And they had to say something about the senior that uh, maybe no, none of the other teammates really knew. And so it was a, it was a challenge for the underclassmen to find out, you know, what they could about each, uh, each senior they were going to present. It's I'm sure it's a t-shirt that many of those seniors uh, may have worn just a couple of times uh, after their college career, but I'll tell you what, I bet you it's hanging in their closet to this day as a, as a great memory of, of, of their, their final moment with their college football team. And that would be true of a high school senior as well. I bet. Absolutely. I, you know, it's, it's just such a great day, you know, in, in some regards, you always have that lump in your throat, you know, cause it, it is as a coach, it's, it's emotional to see those guys you've brought through your program for four years, or if you're at the high school level, you, you've probably seen these gr- guys grow even through your youth program as, you know, if, if you pay attention to everything they're doing along the way. Um, you know, one neat thing that we did uh, while I was at Oberlin College, and I really liked this idea. It was kind of, again, another one of those um, emotional times for the players. And we let the seniors lead this one, so it's a little bit different. Um, but we would, you know, we finished that, last practice we'd gather them in the middle of the field you know the the guys have been doing this so they knew you know where to to uh what to do but you know it was their opportunity to take the whole team to a specific spot on the field where their most memorable moment from their college playing career you know in our stadium took place and they would share that moment and share what it meant to them and uh you know a lot of those guys would get get choked up over, uh, you know, just talking about it and, and how that moment really changed their, you know, what they saw as a, you know, a, a, a play that really maybe got them going in their college career or, you know, the, the, the moment they finally figured it out as a player and, and were able to, you know, move on and play with confidence or something that just, you know, something that sticks with them forever, that this was the, the greatest play I was a part of in my football career here. And, you know, a little different. This one's led by the seniors, um, but it's pretty neat to move around that field and then just hear them talk about it. And, and, and they go into such great detail that you would have thought that play happened, you know, just two minutes before they talked about it. <laughs> That's a great walk down memory lane. Man. Yeah, it is. Uh, when I come back, Keith, when I come back in my second life to be another football coach, I'm going to I'm going to borrow that idea from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, well, Coach, you, uh, I know uh, you have one. Uh, you, you want to wrap this up with a, a great idea that uh, you know sticks out to you for how we can celebrate this idea of tradition and, and legacy in our programs. Sure, and I'll be glad to. This is really, uh, you know, 
thinking out of the box and it uh, bodes well for your future planning as a coach. You know, you go through your, your season, but you normally as a, as a high school coach or a college coach, you start your season with some kind of a conditioning event. Maybe it's tradition. Maybe it's a, a rite of passage. Uh, maybe it uh, gives the coaching staff an idea of who's not in football shape. But you, you normally, most football programs start, start out their, their August training with some kind of a, a test. And it may be taken lightly. It may be taken very seriously by the coaching staff. But then you progress through your season and you play 9, 10, 11, 12 games. Here's what I would suggest. And I was, I was able to do it one time in my college coaching uh, experience is that you play on a Friday night and you finish your year and you might have won the state championship. You might have uh, uh, come in fourth in, in your league, whatever the, uh, you know, the final product was. And then you have your team report back on Monday and you dress them down in their shorts and, and their, their shirts and you take them back out on the field and you put them through that same conditioning test that you did in early August. And you find out exactly where your team progressed to or where they regressed in terms of their conditioning and in terms of their football condition. And it's an interesting comparison. I couldn't, it blew me out of the water when I, when I, when I saw the comparison of how, you know, how much we either dropped off in certain positions or in other positions we maintained, or maybe in, in the case of some of the younger players, they got stronger. And you want to include your seniors in this, in, in, in this exercise because your seniors are probably the indicator of what your team really was back in August because they knew how serious the upcoming year would be. So you want your seniors to participate. And you, you don't you don't make it drudgery. You don't make it. You just you just tell the players, here's why we're doing this. And it's an amazing comparison to what you come up with in terms of how, how conditioned your team is at the end of the season versus how it was at the beginning of the year. Uh, it's a great exercise. It gives you some foresight into the future. Maybe you want to change your conditioning test. Maybe you want to alter your test. Maybe you want to eliminate your conditioning test. But it, it gives you that feedback and that accurate information that is so important. And you, you find out that sometimes certain positions, I remember the quarterback position primarily, they actually lost their conditioning edge from the month of August to the uh, end of November. They, they actually got into a position where their conditioning uh, stamina was, was – much less than it was back in August. And I think that's a reflection that quarterbacks just don't run enough during the, during the year uh, <laughs> when it comes to practice. Other positions, not as, not as uh, slanted and, and not as exaggerated, but uh, that's, that's an idea for the coaches to, uh, to keep in the back of their mind. I think it adds tremendous information for the future that you plan for the next season. Yeah, I think it does provide you a great tool as you as you look ahead. Not certainly not one of those ideas I think they'll enjoy as much, maybe as as the other things we talked about. Um, but I'm sure you know you would encourage coaches to to send you guys off the right way with uh, those in addition. And um, coach, uh, some great ideas today. Obviously, you know, just sitting here talking about these things really brings back a, a lot of the guys, memories of the guys I've I've coached and enjoy the time with and um you know these players i think sometimes they don't don't realize the impact they make on our lives as well so it's uh definitely a great time of the year to uh to celebrate those kinds of things and uh certainly enjoyed the uh ideas you had today for that well i certainly enjoyed your your story about oberlin uh those student athletes there i know they're real bright young guys but uh i'll tell you what that's that's a great um walk down memory lane the way you pull that off with those guys and i'm sure they'll they'll always remember that moment absolutely well coach as we we finish up uh you know the regular season here and, and you know we're gonna we're gonna join together a few more times here before you know the uh the end of the segment but uh i want to make sure that we're sharing a, a great resource that you've put together in fact I, I you know i have a lot of coaching books on my shelf coach 
and I don't have a quarterback manual that is 420 pages long. You've, you've certainly put together a very comprehensive resource on the position, and, and obviously that's uh, you know sharing years of experience uh, with some great quarterbacks that you've been able to tutor uh, over the course of your career. Tell us a little bit about uh, your book, Eyes Up. Well, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I sat down one moment after my active coaching career and I said, you know, I'd like to give something back to the game. And uh, so I sat down and it took me close to a year uh, to uh, compile the book. And the name of the book is Eyes Up, as you, as you referenced already, Keith. But it's, uh, it's a 420-page book on quarterback development. If you're a quarterback, I would uh, – encourage every young ascending quarterback to uh, be exposed to this book. If you're a coach or a quarterback trainer or a quarterback coach or a head coach, I think it's a tremendous book because uh, there's not a more important relationship in football than between the head coach and his quarterback. It hits on a lot of interesting topics that are not normally covered out there by typical football books. A couple of the chapters, Keith, uh, there's uh, some of the feedback I've received on the book has just been uh, very tremendous in terms of w- one of the chapters is on quarterback leadership. And, uh, boy, you, you can't even go into a library and find any book written on leadership as it relates to the quarterback position. You know, you can find leadership stories on politicians and historians and, and all that. To read a, a full chapter on quarterback leadership, I got tremendous feedback on that. There's a there's a chapter on the role of the parent. If the book were were of any value, I would encourage every parent to uh, be exposed to the book just for that chapter alone. And uh, so there's and then of course there's obviously great quarterback technique and what it was like to be in the quarterback room of an NFL team. Boy, that's a that's a very special chapter. So um, the book is 420 pages. Got tremendous. Uh, colored photographs and of course the binder is is in a nice leather look so it uh, like you said Keith maybe uh, if you don't read the entire book you can put it on your desk and and it looks like a nice desk piece but uh, (laughs) the book can be uh, can be found on my website or by amazon.com and amazon.com is the one that's uh, selling the book these days. Coach share your website for our listeners as well please. It's it's just simply Coach uh, Shea, S H E A uh, dot com. So you can go simply to just Coach Shea dot com, and and it'll flash up my website, and then of course Amazon dot com books, I think, and and then you just uh, dial up quarterback books or or football books. Coach, it was a it was great conversation today. I really enjoyed it, and uh, you know, obviously, look forward to uh, talking to you next week. Um, we're going to be talking about the big game. And, uh, you know, for, for some of you who are uh, packing up the equipment, you know, moving on and uh, maybe didn't, didn't reach the, the uh, postseason, we're going to have some great ideas for you as well as, as we talk about ways to uh, wrap your season up over the next uh, few weeks here. So uh, look forward to that conversation, Coach. And, again, appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thanks, Keith. And I wish all the coaches out there uh, great success in their, their final couple of games this year. Thank you for tuning in all season long. We appreciate you listening. If you're enjoying the podcast, take a minute, head over to iTunes or Spotify and click uh, five star for a review. If you have a minute and write a review, that would be appreciated as well. Follow all we're doing this season at coachingcoordinator.com and follow me on Twitter at Coach K Grabowski.